Okay, so I got a lot of videos to shoot today. Uh, I've got uh, an action figure that I bought yesterday that I found at Target when I was on my way into work. And I've got a custom action figure that I want to show off. And I've got a very special item right here that I want to show off. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a new addition to my collection, thanks to my cousin, Amy, of uh, Amy's Rock and Pop Shop. Is it Pop and Rock Shop? Pop! Rock and Pop Shop! I got it right. <laughs> Sorry, my tongue gets a little twisted. <laughs> but, uh, but she was kind enough to send me this wonderful item as a birthday present. And uh, I'm really excited to share it with all of you. So this is an actual vintage 1966, when the TV show was on the air, Batman hand puppet by Ideal. So uh, in the days before action figures were really a thing, this was a way that, that kids could play with Batman. And uh, you can see it even still fits on my huge mitt as an adult. But, you know, uh, a kid would probably have a little bit of an easier time with it. I will admit it's quite snug. This is probably the only time that I will ever have Batman on my hand like this, just because I, uh, I wanted to share them with you guys. So this is an actual vintage 1966 Batman hand puppet that my cousin found at a, you know, a flea market or a thrift store or something like that. She picked it up and uh, thought it would be a great present for me, and she was right. Uh, most of these Batman items that were made, uh, at the time of the TV show actually weren't based on the TV show. They were based off of artwork, uh, from the comic books. And this is no exception, at least from the neck down. You can see that this is very much drawn to, like, how they drew Batman in the comic book. Uh, she kind of resisted the temptation to touch it up too much, because you can see it's kind of faded and, you know, missing some of the printing it's just kind of worn off some some kid obviously loved this very much she did redraw the bat emblem a little bit because she wanted the bat emblem to be on there nice and clear and uh she was she was very much assuring me look i know it's crooked but that's how they made it on the original puppet and i'm like yeah i know that's, that's they they didn't put a whole lot of effort into getting batman's emblem exactly straight back in those days it's like you know this just kind of scrawled a bat on there, draw a circle around it. There you go. In the 50s, before they even put the circle around it, because they didn't put the circle around it until, like, 1964. Uh, <laughs> they didn't even bother with the circle. They just kind of, there, there, it's a bat. Okay, whatever. But she kind of touched that up a little bit with some fabric paint, because, you know, Batman's got to have a proper bat symbol. But all the rest of this is the original printing, and you can see it's it's become kind of worn in some places, and in fact, in some places, it's worn completely away. But that's fine with me. That's part of the original history of the toy. So, you know, the, the blues faded almost to the same color as the fabric, which I guess the fabric was gray. Probably matched with the, uh, uh, the rest of his bat suit there. So, unless it's just dingy white fabric. I don't know. But even though the artwork is very much based off the comic book, you can tell that the head sculpt is very much based off of Adam West as he appeared on the television show. Like, the uh, the cowl isn't 100% the shape that it is on the show, but you can tell that that was what they were going for. And the lower half of him is unmistakably based off of Adam West's chin. So, uh, and he's got the eyeballs in the in the cowl. Which again would have been what he looked like on the TV show. He didn't have eyeballs in 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 his uh in his eyelets in the comic books. Remember, they just had the plain white eyes like you're used to seeing on Batman. So it wasn't a hundred percent based on the comic book, but just kind of enough based off the comic book. Probably they didn't have to pay the TV show or the actor himself any royalties. <laughs> So, that's an unfortunate thing. And you can see that, uh, you might be wondering what this is. This is a tag that, uh, Amy put around his, put around his neck. You know, or her little trademark there. And you might be wondering, why'd she do that? It's just a hand puppet that, like, you know, was made in the 60s. Ah, well, there's a little more to it. Let me show you some stuff. Uh, 
So what Amy does is she makes these cone dolls, and she usually will buy some kind of vintage doll head and put it onto one of these cone bodies and, and build a doll around it. And uh, you can see it'd be perfect to be something you could put on top of a Christmas tree or something like that. So, uh, so she makes these cone dolls. They're really cool. And what she did was she wanted to make me a, a, a cone doll because that's her, her medium of choice. And she wanted to give me this vintage Batman puppet, but she didn't want to make the puppet like like anything other than the puppet, if that makes any sense. She didn't want to, you know, just basically hack this puppet up to make a doll, you know, She but she still wanted to make me a doll, but she still wanted to be a puppet. So what she did was she made this really cool base to put him on with this uh, wire armature. And what you're supposed to do is you take it and you stick him up in there. So this goes inside the puppet. And she actually shipped it to me inside the puppet. But I, I wanted to like actually use it as a puppet at least once. So <laughs> like I said, for the video, I thought it would be best to to show you guys its function as a puppet first. So what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully with this 50-year-old fabric that I don't want to mess up, I'm going to put this armature back in here. And uh, then we have a little bit of posability for Batman. Please don't stab into the 50-year-old fabric. <laughs> okay. So there we go. Now, I'm not sure if this was intentional, but the top of the cone was inside of the head. And I wound up pulling that out when uh, when uh, I was, you know, taking the armature out. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be, like, uh, part of the armature, but it actually wound up coming loose from it and getting stuck up inside his head. So, uh... Amy, I'm sure you're going to watch this at some point. Just give me your advice as to uh, uh, if I should attach this back onto the armature or uh, if it's just something that just kind of accidentally got stuck in his head or, or what. But for now, what I'm going to do is, now that I have the armature back in here, I'm going to fit this in here. I figure what I'm supposed to do is that the, uh, the, the, the top of this is supposed to go into the... Uh, or the, the top of this hole is supposed to go over the... You see all the, the armature was shaped kind of like an M. So this is probably supposed to... She probably put that on there to kind of stabilize the head a little bit. So it wouldn't flop around. That's what I figure. But there we go. So that gives us a nice little display. Let's try to put the thing back in there. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. But like I said, when I was fooling around with it, it was kind of like, it kind of jammed up actually inside the head, and uh, I wound up pulling it out, because I was pretty sure it wasn't supposed to go like all the way inside the head. I was thinking it was supposed to probably be easier if I just take the cone out, right? <laughs> I was thinking that if, if it was uh, indeed a part that's actually supposed to be just kind of inside the head. It's just supposed to be just kind of inside the head and not all the way inside the head. So I think that's how I'm supposed to do this. So let's just, I'm just going to drop it in here. There we go. And hopefully it won't go all the way inside the head this time because I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to go all the way inside the head. So, and then that should give him a little bit of stability. Okay, and put together. Again, I'm being very gentle with fabric that's older than I am. <laughs> so. There we go. So, yeah. So now I have this uh, really cool display stand that makes him into a cone doll, like my cousin Amy makes. And it looks quite lovely. And this will make a really cool display piece. And uh, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this yet, but somehow it's going to get its place up there on, like, the uh, the wall of honor with all my other coolest stuff. 
because this is now one of my favorite things that I own. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully in the next video you watch, I will have figured that out. So, uh, like I said, this is, this is like what they had before action figures. They would have like a hand puppet or something like that. Bendies, I think they had at the time. Little figurines like army men. They had like little play sets of the Bat Cave and everything like that. And you could play with Batman with like your army men and stuff like that. But uh, action figures weren't really a thing yet. So this was a way that kids could, could act out the adventures of Batman before they'd really invented those. I think G.I. Joe would have just come out like a couple of years before the TV series. And it wouldn't be long before uh, they would have Captain Action, which was a superhero action figure that you could dress up like Batman. But they wouldn't have an actual real Batman action figure, like a bespoke Batman action figure, until the 70s when Mego took over the, uh, the DC license. And, man, did they ever, you know, take advantage of it. And Batman was probably the thing they made the most toys of. Like, you know, Spider-Man was really popular at the time. So, of course, they made a figure of Spider-Man and two of his villains, the Lizard and the Green Goblin. And Superman, of course, is one of the most popular superheroes. But, really, the only Superman Migos they made were Superman, Supergirl, and Mixius Pidlick. Of all villains. Not Lex Luthor. Not Brainiac. Not uh, Bizarro. Makes his piddling. <laughs> but when Mego made Batman, they made Batman, Robin, Batgirl, Joker, Catwoman, Riddler, Penguin. They made a Batmobile. They made a Batcopter. Uh, you know, Bat Cycle. The, the Bat Cave. Uh, the, the Wayne Foundation. They made a place out of the Wayne Foundation. <laughs> Like, that's how Batman crazy they went. But this isn't a video where we're talking about Mego. I just get off track a lot of the times. Blame my ADD. But, <laughs> but yeah, so so uh, this would have been something, like, some kid obviously loved this thing and played the hell out of it. And I like that. That's part of the history of the toy. So, but now this toy is mine. And now the little uh, little things that Amy added to it are part of the history of the toy. So, uh, I'm not going to take this tag off. I don't know whether the intention is to take the tag off or not, but I'm going to leave it on there. I figure I probably could take it off without damaging it, you know, because if I took just took the puppet and kind of, like, folded the, the figure of the puppet inwards, I'm pretty sure I could slide it off quite easily. But I choose not to, because I like it better this way. I like it, uh, it, it's, it's a little piece of her, so I'm going to keep that. So, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for taking this little trip with me into a, a more personal item. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and got a little bit of a kick out of it like I did. I'm gonna figure out some way to get him to be a little more stable. Maybe I'll put, like, a dowel or something in there. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he's really cool. I really like him. So, thanks, Amy, again. I really appreciate it. This was a, a really nice... Uh, birthday present, and I'm really happy to have it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and all the fun YouTube stuff down below. Tell me what you think of uh, this Batman puppet. What are some of your favorite childhood Batman toys that you had when you were a kid? Uh, just leave some kind of comment. Nobody ever leaves any comments anymore. <laughs> like, like I got, I got a few regulars, and I'm, I'm grateful to have you, but I, I'd like to see more comments. That'd be nice. So just like have a little bit of a conversation. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this time. Uh, we got another video coming up that I'm about to shoot. So uh, uh, talk to you later. Bye.